Hello people, in this video let us look at this uh, book, textbook of clinical embryology by Vishram Singh. So embryology usually is a part of anatomy and embryology is best learnt by some videos and books like this. Let's look inside this book. Book looks clear, very neatly spaced fonts, not crowded, colors, drawings, isn't it? Look at the contents. So, from gametogenesis, fertilization, how development of face, nose, palate, how digestive tract develops how respiratory system develops, heart, etc. So here they are showing you fertilization. This is menstrual cycle, gametogenesis. How hair develops, wow. Final, this is vertebra, right? Vertebral segment. This one all is very important. Pharyngeal arches. See, second one here. Actually, second one here. Okay, second arch. The nerve is the facial nerve. The seventh cranial nerve, isn't it? So, these arches, you should know the nerves of the arches. Then here, they're showing you the cartilage of the arches. This is the second arch cartilage. From this second, that is this green color, what develops that they have shown here. You can see here from the second arch cartilage, you'll get the state piece bone that's inside your ear, ear ossicle, right? Styloid process, stylohyoid ligament that is from the styloid process to the hyoid bone, right? Stylohyoid ligament, then the hyoid bone upper part, lesser cornu and upper half of the body of the hyoid bone. These two are connected by this ligament. So all these are coming from this cartilage. Interesting that ligament comes from cartilage. Okay. So this and all is very important for your exam. So what do you think about this book guys? What they have shown here? Formation of the laryngotracheal groove. Here you can see components of the interventricular septum. So you have the between the two ventricles. You have the septum, right? That will have a bulbar part, membranous part and the muscular part. So, which one is more prone to the ventricular septal defect? Membranous? Membranous part is more prone to the defect? Yeah, this book says that. See here. Most common in the membranous part of the... What is this? Fourth septum, is it? No, no, no. Fourth, no. It is interventricular septum. Okay. This is how the aortic arches develop guys. This is also important for you. See here they have shown the development of these arteries. In this diagram guys they are showing you the ascent of kidneys. How the kidney ascends from down. And why does it ascend? Because the pelvis is so small it doesn't have place. So it is ascending and it will get better blood supply on top they are saying. So they explain the reason also why it does that. So that is nice right. And normally what anomalies will be there uh, in, um, you know, by, by this growth itself, you can say what anomalies you can find in people commonly. Horseshoe kidney. Then here you have the lobulated kidney they are showing. Here they are showing the congenital anomalies of the ureter. Okay. So that is the whole point, right, of reading embryology. You need to know what common anomalies will be there in people, right. At the end of every chapter, they are giving some clinical correlation, which is good. They are giving some key developmental milestones when it will happen. They are saying golden facts to remember, which is the master endocrine gland. It's a pituitary. They are not saying it is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the master of the master. The master is pituitary, right? And the pineal gland is the third eye. Okay. Then what else? Here at the end of every chapter, they are giving you some clinical problems. 
and they're giving the solutions of that also at the end of the uh, every chapter which is really nice okay this book seems good the only thing is um, they are putting left side images i would prefer right sided images and um, these books are useful along with uh, some videos if you watch right you will get the three three dimensional view that's all for now guys in this video on uh, this book on clinical embryology bye bye